Dobbs mm -hmm. decision overturned Roe v. Wade, kicked it back to the states. My question is, now that that has happened, how has that changed the landscape uh, and the strategy for advancing the cause of life and protecting the lives of the unborn? How has that changed the strategy? What does that um, effort look like now in the wake of Dobbs? So it's the right question, because what you just described that was on June 24th at 10, 10 in the morning, um, for us has never been the same. It's a revolution in a way. Uh, and I think that the, the uh, conversations coming out of that day have proved that it is, it is forcing our uh, nation's leaders and, and our citizens to dig deep and think what, in a way that they never had to before. Uh, well, let's just say, the reason they never had to actually really think it through that much and vote according to their um, position on this, uh, they didn't have to, but they did. I'm just saying that it was theoretical before. If you and I, if you voted for a candidate that said, I'm going to make sure that, uh, that uh, we outlaw abortion or that we're going to stop abortion after the first trimester or at a heartbeat, the court would never have allowed it. The court, um, in their words, gave this back to the people to decide on our own. In the court of public opinion, make your best arguments and may the best argument win. It's what we're made of in America. It's what makes us great. It's not a king that decides this question. It's not a court that decides this question. It's the will of the people. And that is, why, that is where pro-life strength is. Now, the abortion industry, NARAL, Planned Parenthood, who have owned this issue for so long because they, they in 1973, when Roe versus Wade was established, they got every abortion without limit up until the end. There was almost nothing that you could do about, uh, about the abortion problem, about that death until now. And so um, when the court uh, delivered their opinion, there was the main opinion, and there was also a concurring opinion by Kavanaugh, and those opinions themselves said this thing, that now it is up to you in this deeply moral issue of our day, just like other deeply moral issues of other days, that you will speak, you the country, will speak through your elected representatives and decide what you think about this issue. They prescribed nothing. They just said, you decide. And they made it very clear, along with Kavanaugh's opinion, that it would be the states and it would be the Congress. Any, in, any legislature that is expressing the will of the people um, through their own election uh, is the appropriate place. So we're talking about states and we're talking about the Congress. The states immediately were, um, moved to pass 25 ambitious pro-life protections, 25 states, half the nation. Um, uh, so on the state level, that was a beautiful thing. They moved fast. Governors did beautifully. Legislatures um, were emboldened. Uh, and, uh, and then immediately the left moved to try to challenge those um, and are challenging those laws. And then they are now, uh, with their acumen and their money and their ability to win ballot initiatives, which they are uniquely prepared well to do, given uh, the dynamics of, of the pro-life movement versus the um, pro-abortion movement, are are very much threatening in nine states the bills that were passed to protect human life in each of those states, starting with Ohio, going to Arizona, Nebraska, Florida, Missouri, and more. And um, so th that is a very real threat. We could very well lose those states if we don't have our act together for the first time. Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America, is making Ohio a a huge fight. We have not been involved in ballot initiatives. is not a strength, you may have noticed, of the pro-life movement because we're better at, at, um, at elections than we are at ballots, given the strength of the media and the money on the other side. We need our own candidates communicating like you, Kelly, so beautifully have, and it overcomes some of the power on the other side. So we're deeply embroiled in that, the Ohio ballot initiative, which will be the first domino uh, going one way or the other in our belief. All these ballot initiatives are 
are important in themselves because they were, will either allow the will of the people to stand in those, in those states or they will basically obliterate the will of the people to establish any law in their states on abortion up until the end. And now we look at the, at the presidential race and we see that we have a Democratic Party that wants no limits. They have a federal bill that has been voted on over and over. Every Democrat has voted for this bill, House and Senate. They're very willing and they have expressed their desire in the Senate to overcome a filibuster to enact a law, oddly named Women's Health Protection Act. Um, it is truly just an abortion, a uh, full-term abortion bill that would wipe out every single law in the nation on, on abortion. And they are, not, they are not kidding, they are serious. And that's how they've responded to what they see as a right being taken away. If you think about it, it's like how, why the NRA is so powerful, uh, why they have so many members, people trying to take their uh, rights away and so they have, uh, they, have a, they have had over the years a really great backlash. This is not a right, obviously, but it's perceived as a right on the abortion side. And so that right being perceived as taken away has galvanized the left. So that national level conversation and what presidential candidates say about what they think is a gift to us. Right. If right. you contrast a 15 week or a 12 week limit with unlimited abortion on demand, you win that in the court of public opinion and among voters in battleground states every single time. Well, let's as talk long about as you're that. willing to communicate. Yes. Yeah. So in 2022, when I was running for Senate as the pro-life candidate, I was saying that at a national level after Dobbs, I would support a national ban at 15 weeks because that's when we've scientifically proven that a fetus can feel pain and we have to balance the humanity of the child that's unborn with the health needs of a woman who's pregnant. And right. like you said, you win the national conversation every time because mothers out there, people understanding health issues and that there is something more than an appendix in there go, that sounds reasonable. And my opponent literally introduced the bill post-Dobbs to reinstate Roe versus Wade and as you said, Roe versus Wade allows abortions up to a child being born. And she had supported, and the Democrats have since reported, even after a child is born. So mm -hmm. the, because the intent was an abortion, even if the child is laying there as a separate patient on the delivery table, separate from its mother, all of the Democrats in the House of Representatives voted that they should kill that child. That's, that's what right. Roe versus Wade allows. And that's what my opponent, the Republican senator, quote unquote Republican, had voted for and introduced in Congress post ops. Some people would say that that's not a pro-life position, even though I am adamantly pro-life. But you also at SBA, Pro-Life America, had introduced that bill pro post ops. Can you explain in just a couple minutes that we have left why that is a pro-life position and why you are advocating for that post ops? Yes. So in every congressional entity or in any legislative entity, our obligation is to be as ambitious as we can possibly be for life and still win. So mm -hmm. we don't want to undercut. We don't want to overestimate. But we have to be for something that we that is not just a posture to wear a label that says you're pro-life, but something that you that we think is a is a is a consensus that can't be ignored. Mm -hmm. And that's happening in every state right now. And it, and it is happening in the Congress. The 15 week limit is, let's just say it, it is a, it is a complete concession. It is, uh, but it is a concession in a moment that includes a country that has legislators coming from California, right. Illinois, New York, Oklahoma, Arkansas, all these places. And so you wanna be as strong as you can with a pathway to winning so that you get some of those children that are standing on that railway line and there's a train coming, you get as many off as you can possibly get. And you never leave one on because of the purity of having, of saying, nope, it's all of them or none of them. Like, no one would do that if they actually saw the deaths of children coming. And so that is why we would, would that is why every human rights battle mm -hmm. in our nation's history that has been successful has started with let's start with this much, be as ambitious as we can, mm -hmm. like Lincoln did, 
and said, we're going to get this much. And then that is a starting point. It is not an end. We will not stop until the human rights of every child are affirmed, they are saved, and every mother has been served.